This is Master Goo, and this is me, George, some British guy. And this is my story of how becoming a Tai Chi monk in the distant mountains of China changed my life, and how what I learned out there could change yours without you needing to travel. My story began in 2017 when I finished education. I descended into confusion and anxiety, beating myself up for not knowing what I was doing with my life. A new character began to dominate my headspace, who I called the Underminer. And hoping I could find some peace from the Underminer, I set off on a journey. Thank you. Deep in the mountains of China, I tried to get into a Kung Fu monastery. I wasn't getting anywhere with that. I asked the locals to help, but they brought me instead to a small Tai Chi school. I thought Tai Chi, that's for older people. But I tried it and fell in love with it. I met Master Gu. He just so happened to be the only master that was fluent in English on the whole mountain. And he guided me into the beautiful world of the ancient philosophy of Taoism. I'd never heard of Taoism before, but as I learned more, how I talked to myself began to change. I was guided to accept my whole self, even the frustrating bits I didn't like, to get out of my head and into my body, and to relax into being okay that I didn't have everything worked out. My headspace transformed, I found some peace. And then I needed some money. So six months later, I came back home and started a job. The end. <laughs> Except I still had my challenges. Sometimes I'd be up all night worrying about what was happening in the world. And I knew that I'd only scratched the surface of this ancient culture still alive in faraway China. I wondered, what if I went back? If you sometimes struggle with your resilience and wanting to find meaning and purpose, then you're not alone. Could our modern problems have ancient solutions. It is the time you come back to Uda. So I'm gonna try and get back to the living heart of this wonderful philosophy on the other side of the planet, 12,000 kilometers away. I'm not gonna fly. I'm walking on a lake. I'm walking on a lake. Who would have thought it's possible? It's a frozen lake and I'm on it. I managed to get halfway across the Eurasian continent, but then disaster hit. The city at the heart of a public health crisis in China is shutting its public transport network to try to prevent the spread of a virus. Oh, George, uh, the situation becomes serious. Come as soon as possible. New Year's celebrations cancelled. Pressure is building to completely isolate China. Two more Chinese cities have joined Wuhan and being put in the lockdown. The I made it into China three days before they locked their border. I was in an intense lockdown, but thankfully a Tai Chi teacher friend had given me refuge during the storm. Six weeks later, I saw an opportunity to try and get to the mountain where Master Gu was waiting. Thank you so much for having me. This is it, Wudang Mountains. It's been two years. Hey! Hey! Somehow I made it to the birthplace of Tai Chi on the other side of the planet in a global pandemic. We started this journey searching for resilience and ideas that might help you and I and humanity live in peace. Another name for the Wudang Mountains is Supreme Harmony Mountain, one of the few Taoist communities still surviving in industrialized communist China. There are monasteries, Kung Fu schools, Tai Chi schools, hermits living in caves, for thousands of years, people here have dedicated themselves to Taoist ideas and practices in order to achieve supreme harmony. Well, that would be pretty cool. But we're modern people living in the 21st century. Could these ideas and practices help us too? Not again. 
Living like a Tai Chi monk, we had a simple daily routine. We'd wake up early, go for a walk, then practice Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a moving meditation, a beautiful way to get out of your head and into your body and into the present moment. We also meditated, meditation being the fundamental practice discovered all over the world to help us see the nature of reality instead of just being lost in our thoughts. I was finding more peace, but I guess it's easier out here. I still hadn't got any clearer about what could help with our big challenges, nor how I could spend five minutes on my computer without getting overwhelmed. Thankfully, sometimes Master Gu and I would sit down together and he would share some ideas from Taoism. The common people might see uh, the universe, it's like a chaos. You see the grass, the tree, they don't, uh, they don't, uh, you know, very parallel like this way. The rivers are, you know, not uh, not a straight line or not a totally a uh, round shape. A good word is they just grow naturally. Just like we see the Taiji, you see, okay, here we have the the young part, in part, but please notice outer there is a very beautiful round shape. This means our whole world, there's no matter how complicated change or it's the yin yang change in general, it's a beautifully harmonious union. If division and chaos are an essential part of the greater balance and harmony of the natural world, could that be true for us too? It's a challenging idea because if you're anything like me, you try and hide from darkness, chaos, the bad parts of yourself and life that you don't like. This is where it hurts. With my body, I find myself in increasing pain during my practice. Who would have thought it's possible to get injured doing gentle Tai Chi? In fact, it's getting worse. But I was so caught up with the desire to improve, I tried to ignore the pain. I denied its value. Until eventually, I needed help. Nally. <laughs> it's a bit painful. It's getting in the good spots. I did not recognise that the pain was feedback from the greater harmony of my body, guiding me to change my practice. I like drifting in sweat right now. If we see it in the right way, any challenge in our lives can be our teacher. The yin yang reminds us to be flexible and open to this possibility. On our journey towards understanding the world and finding resilience, the yin yang is a powerful idea. But why is it then that life often doesn't feel harmonious? In what sense is there harmony in our big social problems? Surely there's too much stuff in the real world to fix. Are these Taoists just hopelessly optimistic? We're off on a walk. Let's go. It's 40 degrees. In traditional Chinese culture, there's something called Dungao, climbing to high places. It's supposed to be good for the health. That's why so many of these temples are built on mountains, so the emperors could come experience some perspective. And today we have the privilege of perspectives the emperors of old could only have dreamed of. We now know that all of humanity's division and tribalism is physically contained within a greater whole, a greater harmony one of indescribable beauty. 
The emperors of China imagined themselves to rule all under heaven, but they were just one of many civilizations, and humanity is just one of many conscious, intelligent species. There is an intelligence that animates this living planet, and it's so mysterious that our brains struggle to grasp it. But over time, human beings, we have put labels on it. A Christian may call it God's grace, a Muslim, Allah's will, a Hindu Brahmin, an atheist, the laws of nature. The Taoists, they called it the Tao. For them, there is nothing outside of the Tao. There's no concept that an external power has placed humanity here. Instead, they believed that we come out of the world. The same laws of nature flow through all things. A Taoist practitioner in general, he very much regard himself as one part of the nature, like a piece of leaf, like a bird, like a stone, like a spell of dust. I grew up an atheist, and if I did think about my relationship to the world, I would get existential. But seeing Master Gu's joyful reverence of nature, stumbling across non-human intelligent beings, and spending time in meditation and emptiness, how I understood myself and the world began to change. I no longer felt separate from the world. I began to perceive my interdependence, that I am the universe, the Tao coming to know itself in this human form getting confused and anxious and laughing and dancing and tai chiing. As my understanding of myself expanded, the worries that used to define me were held in a bigger space. They didn't overwhelm me as much. Meditation and spirituality offer us a peace and resilience that is attainable. They do not demand that we never get anxious again. Instead, they offer the possibility that spaciousness and balance can be found in the midst of it all. So hi, this is me today. It's been three years since I've been on the mountain. And for me, yeah, I do feel more joyful, more balanced, more at peace. I'm still on my journey. And wherever you are on your journey, the empowering bit is that the great wisdom teachers from around the world all reminded us that human beings have an immense capacity for love, for wisdom, for compassion and peace. And they offer us practices to help us get there. I'm going back to China next month. Somehow my life has turned into sharing these ideas and practices. If you want to join for the adventure, I invite you to smash the subscribe button in a peaceful way. And I do hope what I learn can serve you and serve me and so serve life. Because I do believe that connection is the cure for both our personal and collective challenges. Practice is the path. It's how we stay in relationship with that connection and our potential. And then service can fill our lives with meaning and purpose. And what those three look like for you, you've got to work out because you are a unique being with a unique journey and sending so many good wishes for you and your onward voyage. Flow well, my friend. <laughs>